So I'm wearing a I'm wearing a leather jacket today that I bought at Saks, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And a boss jacket. I wanted to get a new leather jacket, so my wife and I went to the fashion mall. And not many people carry boss, and I like the tapered look of the boss, so we go there. Now here's the problem. I'm kind of um, a minion. I'm not, you know, what a Berkeley challenge, is that right? So, but my shoulders are a little bit wider, but it spreads a little different, so I normally get a large coat and it's down to here. Or a medium coat and I can't even zip it. I'm a, it's a problem. I'm a freak. It's weird, right? So I go there, not going to find a jacket for sure. And if they, if they have one, they won't have a medium. That's for sure. Who carries mediums, right? In the men's department. I go there, they have a medium. I put it on. This is the jacket over here. It fits like a glove. It's lamb leather. It's beautiful. It's exactly what I'm looking for, and I'm surprised they have it. So I tell Mary, Mary, found it, got it, buying this jacket. What do you think she said? That's exactly what she said. How much is it? I never look. I just, I don't know. And she was, she looked at the tag. She says, well, you're going to want to look before you buy it. Right? So I look and said, yep, I ain't buying this jacket. <laughs> so, right? So we leave. Right? I had a price. I wanted to spend three, four hundred bucks. I'd spend five or six. Now, by the way, I have six leather jackets. I have a bunch of Harley jackets. I've got other jackets, right? So this is that. This is kind of the, my dress leather jacket that I wore. So I knew what they cost and what I wanted to spend. This was a lot more than I had ever spent. So I said, well, I ain't spending that. So we leave and we go to Wilson's or whatever leather. And I'm trying on these other jackets. And they're basically, they look like they're made by cavemen and just got cut out. Of, no, anyway, what am I saying? I had already mentally what? Bought that jacket. So everything else I looked at, oh, they, I'm sure they were very nice. To me, they looked like burlap bags, right? 80% emotion, 20% fact. My emotion was, I wanted that jacket. True? It was gone. Now, my commitment had to be, get me flexible on what? Pricing. Let me take you through the psychology of this. My emotion said, buy it. My brain saw the number and said, only a fool's gonna pay that for a leather jacket that you're gonna wear eight times a year. That's right. <laughs> you stupid, you're overpaying, that's too much, don't buy it. That's what my brain told my heart. My heart is like, we're buying, I love it, I want it. And my brain's like, no you don't, you'd be an idiot to do that, time out. So I went and looked. Now, I'm trying on these other jackets. Listen to the statement that I said to my wife. This is exactly what I said. Mary, you know, I had my last jacket 10 years. What'd I just say? I want to buy the other one. Justifying your, justifying your Irrational purchase. purchase. I, just, I just gave my brain the facts it needed to sign off on this purchase. Does that make sense to you? He justified it. That's what we call it. But the, psycho, the psychological, the deeper meaning of this is, is my heart has already made the decision. I see the numbers and my brain stops me from moving forward. So a good salesman will make a logic statement that says what? It's okay to do what your heart wants to do. This makes sense. I made one step. I keep it 10 years. I mean, we average it over 10 years. It's not a lot. See, it wasn't about, I could afford it. It was not about unaffordability. It was about what I thought I should pay for a jacket. I've since adjusted those feelings, right? Okay, so do we agree that that committed buyer's become flexible? Has that ever happened in your life? You decide you want something and end up spending more than you set out to? Every single one of them.